looking for voiceover work when the whole city shuts down has proven to be quite difficult. That's why this morning I decided I'm going to Hawaii. I'm Dane Reed, the voiceover guy. Check me out. Hawaii, the last of the 50 states to join the U.S. Although comprised of six main islands, for this adventure, I only tackled two of them, Oahu and Hawaii, aka the Big Island. I came out here for some sun, family time with my brother who lives here, and my dad who was visiting, and to track down some voiceover opportunities, as usual, because when you're self-employed, there is no such thing as a vacation. My brother lives on Oahu, so we tackled one of the first places that anyone visiting this paradise should. The Polynesian Cultural Center. The Polynesian Cultural Center is world-renowned since 1963 and has attracted millions of visitors since then. It may be the most visited attraction in Hawaii. Welcome to beautiful Hawaii. Now, on my first day here, I checked out the Polynesian Cultural Center. Not really to find voiceover work, but just because it's the Polynesian Cultural Center. It's a history center with lots of fun and educational activities surrounding the various Polynesian people and South Pacific Islanders. We're talking boat rides, luau's, shows, interactive demonstrations, and tours, and a bunch of more stuff that I'll show you later. It's run by Brigham Young University, and all the guides here are students from the school. And it's a great, clean, family-type adventure. Admittedly, I needed some G-rated fun after my trip from Thailand. <laughs> But enough about my other life. Let's get back to this video. Oh yeah, and my search for voiceover work. Every day they do this show representing the different Pacific Islands and their people. From Hawaii, Fiji, Tonga, Tahiti, Rapa Nui, Samoa, some place in New Zealand I can't pronounce, and a bunch of other islands. The colors and the people are beautiful. Being from New York City, the only time you get to make fire is when you accidentally create it while you're trying to light firecrackers in the summer and something goes terribly wrong. In those cases, someone ends up at the hospital and someone ends up getting a whooping. But in this case, we got to try our hands at making fire the Polynesian way, with sticks. I've seen this on TV a million times, so I could do this, right? Nah, I sucked at it. And so did everyone around me who wasn't Polynesian. At this point, I was beat, and still no voiceover leads. In fact, finding voiceover work on Hawaii is exhausting. Our next day was action-packed. I have to hype it up like that so you'll keep watching. Taking advantage of the fact that my dad and I hadn't adjusted to the six-hour time difference, we decided to take a trek up Diamond Head Summit Trail. I was told that the view from the top was amazing, and it was. But my brother neglected to tell me about the two-hour, 1.6-mile hike up and down the mountain, which, by the way, has an elevation gain of 560 feet. Maybe he said elevation, and I thought he said elevator. Either way, it was no average stroll in the park. The terrain consisted of steep climbing of trail and stairs, sometimes through caves like this one. We couldn't rest long either. We had to beat the sunrise, which peaks through at 6 a.m. 
but it was well worth it. When you get to the top, it's breathtaking. And you get to take selfies like these. Taking a few hours off to rest, we then hit the beach for a kind of experience I had never had. A submarine adventure. I'm talking about an active sub that took us under the sea to see Ariel. It was interesting. We dived I think 108 feet and the guide was funny. But still, no VO work for me in Hawaii. I even went on an underwater search. And while our guide was funny, still, nothing. Day three was all about subs, ships, soldiers, and honoring the brave service personnel who served our country, particularly those who lost their lives at Pearl Harbor. My dad and several of my uncles enlisted and served in the armed forces when they first immigrated to the US, some even making careers of it. So when my father gets a chance to do anything military, he's like a kid in the candy store. I can't lie, I find a lot of this fascinating too. And I'm amazed by the people who risk their lives for their countries to the American victory was the role of submarines. The silent service made up only 2% of the U.S. Navy, but its record was unmatched. Me? I'm just a voiceover guy. Carpal tunnel syndrome from editing commercials is as dangerous as it gets for me. Japanese Americans were no longer referred to as citizens. Now, they were not aliens. One of the places that we toured was the USS Missouri. Although named the USS Missouri, this battleship where the Japanese officially surrendered was actually built in my hometown of Brooklyn. The ship was put into action in 1944 to fight in World War II and also fought in the Korean War. It was mothballed in 1955, but brought back into action in 1984 until 1992 after also serving in the Persian Gulf War. Our guide even said, if needed, this ship could be brought back into action again. Today I took a tour of the USS Missouri, which was the ship that the Japanese surrendered on in 1940 something or another. Anyway, it ended the war. Not much voiceover found today, but I'm going to keep looking. I don't really think I can describe the feeling I had when I went to the Arizona. This is the centerpiece of the Pearl Harbor experience. I've been to a lot of memorials. None gave me the same eeriness as this one. When you know the history of the ship and how it was attacked, you realize that those men aboard had no chance to get out. And then you realize that they're still trapped underneath, in the ship right below your feet. Decades later, the oil, the ship that sunk with those men on board still leaks one drop at a time as it surfaces. It's almost as if those men are sending the world a message, like they're speaking to us or something. It's just humbling. I wish war didn't have to happen, but it does.
Day four. I have a confession for you guys. I haven't told you everything about my Hawaii trip. By day three, I started getting really sick. Sinusitis had me feeling like I had the flu. But I pressed on. Today, we tackled one of my favorite activities anywhere in the world. Horseback riding. Horseback riding is a lot of fun. Well, probably not as much for the horse, but that's another topic. My horse was Rascal. I'm doing great, me and Rascal back here. I'm even rubbing him a little bit. Good horse. Our guide was telling us that a portion of the proceeds from these horseback tours is donated to the Wounded Warrior Program. Also, he allows some of the vets to ride the horses as sort of a kind of therapy. I think he was a vet himself. Either way, it was a great idea. That night, we hit up the world-famous Jermaine's Luau. And I do mean world-famous. Pretty much anyone who has been to Hawaii has been here. The food is good and the entertainment rocks. Plus, I like the girls in the hula skirts. But by the end of the evening, I was pretty much beat. I was too sick to continue. Days five, six, seven, and eight all pretty much looked like this. I actually ended up having to go to the urgent care. I never really recovered, but by day nine, I just had to keep going. There were only two days left. Day nine, I was back on my feet. Barely, but I was functional. Actually, I was up in the air. I took a flight from Oahu to the Big Island. My mission was to see Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. I had never actually seen a volcano before. Volcanic activity on Hawaii is constant, mostly not affecting anyone, except when there is a huge eruption, which has happened. There was one so massive in size that it blew the head off the mountain and wreaked havoc on the island. According to our guide, the lava flowed from 1992 to 2008 in such a way that it destroyed and redirected the roads. It wasn't until 2008 that they started back tours. All throughout the tour, you can see the evacuation routes, just in case. You'll notice that I'm wearing a jacket too. On Hawaii? Yeah, that's because not only was I still sick, but also because it gets colder at the higher elevations. One of the things that you have to do if you make this trek is to visit the Lava Rock Cafe. The food is pretty good and not too expensive. The other thing that you gotta do is the Jagger Museum. From up here, there's an excellent view at a safe distance of the volcano. Plus, they chronicle its history and educate you about seismic activity and how scientists attempt to predict future earthquakes and eruptions. And that was pretty much it. Day 10, I just packed up to leave. 10 days, two islands, a bunch of adventures, sinusitis, no voiceover work. I figured before I leave, though, I'd try one more place. Yeah, just as I thought. If you like this video, please share it with someone who lives in Hawaii, who loves Hawaii, or someone who'd love to travel to Hawaii. Oh, and of course, anybody who might hire for voiceover work. I'm Dane Reed, the voiceover guy. I'm gone.